Observer, I would have uh, qualified for a badge yesterday. And, uh, it was a fairly difficult one. I think everyone's familiar with the Silver Sea and the Bronze Sea and the Gold Sea. Well, I fulfilled the requirements yesterday for a Silver P badge. <laughs> silver P. <tea. laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, it was difficult, it was hard, but I finally achieved it. And I'll just say, um, my next goal is not the, the Gold P, because the gold pea is actually a lower level than the silver pea. <coughs> because the silver pea shows that you've been taking care of your hydration. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the first for you? It was. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Bob Wonder says you should practice in the bathtub because it's the same seating angle. <laughs> it's not easy. And it's a good place to practice, yeah. Um, well, congratulations on that. I know that's a, that's a milestone. Um, on one of my early cross-country flights, uh, when I was, didn't know what I was doing, I had a, a mentor in the back seat. It was in uh, one of the Bassett gliders, so one of the old Groves. Yeah. And we were flying, and it was just a great day, and we were up for hours and hours. And we had set, uh, it was on a safari where we were going from one airport to another. And we were going to make it to the airport that we was the goal. And in a grove, that's pretty. You know, we were, we were, I was, I was happy. And the slightly older gentleman in the back seat was like, I really got to pee, and I can't do it in a glider. <coughs> so, with my uh, threatening, we are not going to land. <laughs> he finally achieved his first. <laughs> I, I got a comment about that. I did a cross country camp in um, Seminole Lake in Florida last year. They had the seniors at the same time. And one of the topics of the cross country was a one and a half hour lecture on how to pee and, <laughs> and all of this. And all these three speakers, they had all these apparatus. <laughs> you fill the bag and then you throw it out the window. You know, you know, if you really have to go, you're going to throw like a big window. And of course, while you throw in it, you know, it's going to burst. <laughs> it was very, it was a, honest to God, the best lecture of the whole time. <laughs> well, it, was the, it was the worst class ever. Study, I mean, right? it was like, Fred, did you say you bought little packs from your Marine yeah. Corps day? <laughs> so, well, before I'm you go a little bit further, I want to give credit to Marsha for her flight yesterday, late in the afternoon, getting all the way out to the Pine Nuts. And I had a beater with a stick to come back. <laughs> how, long, how far along Pine Nuts did you go? Not too far. <laughs> Saw the other glider down below us and decided not to go much further. We weren't that low. <laughs> <laughs> so, since he said that, I might as well talk <laughs> about what I had with Russell. So it was actually a great lesson after the after the thermal uh, intro. I feel like we I, I was really able to understand what we, what we did yesterday. So Russell and I went up in the in the uh, duo discus and uh, worked some very weak thermals over over mineral springs, and then managed to bench up from there to to the pine nuts and make it down the range. But uh, which was awesome in and of itself. It's the one of the bigger flights I've done so far. But it was pretty. <laughs> I just kept looking at the glider, being like. Hey, the glide computer says we're going to make it home, and Russell, you don't seem worried, but I, I, I would never have been in that situation, so it's, it's good that, you know, I mean, I've only been flying for a month or two, 
it was, it was a great experience for me to get to understand what the performance is and what the limitations are. You're talking about mineral peak. Mineral peak. Mineral peak. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mineral peak. Yeah. I was wondering, where's mineral peak? Down really low. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that, that silver flow. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so, and, um, are you yeah. done? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Um, <I'm> done. <laughs> one of the things that I would like to, to note from that flight, um, was first of all, for being really low time, Daniel handles the duo really well. Um, but we were working, you know, half a knot thermal at the, on Mineral Peak, and finally when we got high enough, I said, you know, head over to the ridge. And, you know, the ridge is much bigger uh, than, you know, pine nuts much bigger than the little mineral peak down there. And as soon as we hit the ridge, it's like five knots. So we went from half a knot to five knots. Uh, so again, just picking the place to pour you, pour your work is, is picking the thermal is very important. And then we were able to just able to cruise all the way down to Mount Seagull and come back. And come back about a how far is Mount Siegel? It's the south end of the planet. So. <coughs> how high do you, how high do you eventually get to? 12-1. Nice. So. Mm. What time? Uh, we landed, it landed at 645. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. we, we got to 12-1 yeah. at 615. Yeah, it was pretty strong. You know, the, 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 the Slopes of the mountains are facing the sun. We got the slight wind coming up, but it was nice. Okay. So first thing I want to do. Oh, I have a couple announcements more. Um, I don't know how many people have had too much interaction with the line crew, other than a quick hookup and help us get, helping us get in. But they get here at about eight o'clock. Get all the gliders ready. They're here till about eight o'clock, getting all the gliders put away. So if anybody wants to show their appreciation, um, they would appreciate it. Because, uh, yeah, they, they've been working their butts off. So um, that's one thing. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the sounding for today and see what that looks like. And then we're going to talk about predicting, what, predicting wave. And then we'll look at some real life stuff to see if we actually might get some waves. So, let's see what we got. Awesome. Um, there was a lot of buoyant air around here, and it almost seemed like the, the air had flowed with a slight west wind, had been pushed off the lake, up over through the passes and down, and kind of burrowed underneath the valley air and made it buoyant all over. Quite possible. I mean, I don't know if that's something that's common out here or... Yeah, just like a little mini cold front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just looked at everything up in front of it, so... I mean, I just couldn't even get down. I was staying up there and wherever I went, about mm -hmm. half knot, one knot. Uh, <coughs> Eric, what was the other That's going to be another rule for Which next wave there? camps. If you're the third person with the same name, you can't come. <laughs> mm, click on this button. Come on, click. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, today is a crash. Beach ball of death. Is that right? <laughs> Expected. Um, wouldn't surprise me to see some. What's that? Some high altitude clouds. Yeah, so we got some. And if you look out today, there are there are some. And there's all the jet trails um, are just hanging out up there. So that's another indication of high level moisture. 
So let's go through another hour, starting to get some surface warming here. Another, it's looking better. You can just see that marching over to the right. Becoming less stable, right? Right, so this is, if I did a partial trajectory right there, you can see it's, um, the actual temperature is getting adiabatic here. Mm -hmm. So probably going to get thermals up to about 10,000 feet by 2100 Zulu, which is two o'clock. Thank you. Um, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, and now you know they're definitely not going to go quite as high. And that's just about that. Super dry here. So, um, got some higher ones aloft coming in, which I'm liking the look of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this 16 to a 24. The back goes to 24th. <laughs> <laughs> so this is overnight. So this is 14 Zulu, which is tomorrow morning. No. <coughs> um. Well, we've got some decent winds down low, yeah. and then it drops off, and then it starts increasing again. This is not what we would like to see. It's not ideal. The direction looks good. The direction is good. Um, the stability looks good. Uh, and then what we'll have to look at tomorrow is what it looks out, how it's going to go through the out, the, out the day. Um, let me go through, um, I'll go through our, the, Sorry, I'm having a hard time waking up today. Um, I'm going to go through our forecasting wave seminar, and then we'll come back and look at the stuff for today, if that's okay. But this this is looking from from here on up looks decent. Yeah, it's not looking so great. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's open up. Okay. Predicting mountain wave. So, what we're looking for to give us the conditions for mountain wave events. I like the event. Um, if we have a low pressure system to the north, then that will give us the strong west winds we need. So that's one thing. We can also, if the jet stream is aligned east-west and nearly overhead, that's the ideal condition. If we have the jet stream you know, not, not any frontal things happening, but just the, the boundary between the, the northern and southern air masses, parallel, uh, east-west, then those kind of events can last for days. And those are the kind of events we had the last two weeks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, but that's, that, that's, that's really good. I mean, if, it's the, if the jet stream is slightly to the south, then that means we're in the colder air, which tends to be drier, which tends to allow you to fly because it's not snowing or raining, or a solid cloud deck. Um, and then, of course, if the jet stream's overhead, it has really strong winds aloft, and which, of course, means we're going to have a strong wind gradient. And then, no matter which of these top two conditions we have, the uh, moderate humidity. We want some moisture so that we can see the wave, uh, see the wind indicators. Um, but if we get too much, then we get snow and rain. We're much more likely to get too much moisture when we have the low pressure system coming than when we have just a nice east-west jet stream. Okay. okay, so this is a summary of what we're actually looking for. Um, 
there's forecasts, uh, high level forecasts for the 300, 500, and 700 millibar levels. That's roughly 30,000, 18,000, and 10,000 feet. 10,000 is you know roughly the tops of the mountains around here, so that's, a, that's an ideal one for us. Um, what we'd like to see at the 700 millibar level is greater than 20 knots of wind, and then humidity, if this is the range of humidities that give us different things. If it's less than 60% relative humidity, then we're probably not going to get any clouds at all. Uh, 60 to 70, six, uh, 60 to 80 gives us nice clouds. Um, if it gets more than 80%, then we start to worry about them closing in. So the, the 60 to 80 is the sweet spot. Is this just local for Minden, or is it in general this generalizes pretty well? Uh, this is for here. Uh, I don't know. I've never flown in way anywhere except for Minden and Southern California. So, Mike speaking Colorado, a very similar, um, but the altitudes are higher because they're they're based there at uh, fourteen thousand. Same same uh, organization of the winds aloft, the moisture content, etc. How, how do you convert dew point temperature to percent humidity? Um. I don't know, where but, you, where you, but the, the, the charts we're going to look at give it in relative humidity. Oh, it does. Yeah. So that's why I give it here. Okay, the wind directions, um, you see in the compass rows down there, the green area is where we want, so between 220 and 280. Uh, seems to work well for, for around here. And we like to see that wind gradient of uh, 20 knots at uh, Mountain top level greater than 20, uh, greater than 50 at about 18,000, and greater than 70 or around 70 at uh, 300 millibar, 30,000. Now, and ideally we want to see it increasing with altitude. So it doesn't not only have to be 50 knots at 18, it has to be greater than whatever ever it is at 10,000. <coughs> It, it seems a little, well, I mean, obviously the wind typically will go up with, with uh, altitude, but it almost seems that the higher wind at a higher altitude will tend to push the wave out and flatten it. No, it's, it's that increase in, in velocity with altitude that amplifies the wave. It's, it, it causes, it has to, once it has to go up and go around that corner, the faster it's going, the lower, the, to make that to turn, it's pulling that air underneath it up. So the faster it's going as you go up, the more you get that pull. <coughs> so it's it's that gradient that amplifies it. Like that sounding we just looked at, because it decreases around uh, what was it? Just about ten. ten. Yeah. Between ten and fifteen. Then <coughs> the amplification at that level is not going to be very great, and of course down and low, that's where you really need it to get things started. So, um, so this these are the conditions we need. Now, when people like Gordon and Kempton and Jim Payne are looking at these, they're they're you know they're wanting to see this from here to Colorado or from here to Mexico and up to Oregon, you know the same conditions. And so, when the days that they're looking for that they say only occur three or four days a year, uh, that's when these conditions are over a huge area lined up just right so that they can fly these long flights. As far as the number of wave days we have here that we can fly, we just need, you know, for this one location. So that's what we're looking for. We, so it's our, our, if you're looking just for one location, it's, it's a lot simpler than if you're looking for half the United States. And I'm not going to go over how to do it for half, you know. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I'm gonna I would look at when when trying to predict wave is to look what just look at the, the weather map and um, this was for uh, about a week ago when I was putting this presentation together so I just uh, looked and saw took took, took uh, recorded all the different things I was looking at and then predicted it and then took pictures and stuff, so that's what we're going to be going through, an actual case study as it were. Um, so what we got here is we got some, and just to, my trusty paint stirrer here, so 
So we are right here. It's very easy to find because it's that bend in the California Nevada border. We've got a low pressure here. Things are going to be getting circulation around it like that. And low pressure here, which probably actually means we're going to get some weird little thing. Um, as this comes in, there's a good chance that we'll get a localized wave event here. This is not the kind of thing that that, uh, that uh, you would look for for a really long, uh, big area, wide area crest uh, wave. Okay, so I think I just covered that. So then the, the next thing I would look at is, you know, what's the jet stream going to be doing with this? And it can tell you, uh, you know, this, this is the 30,000 uh, 30, foot or 300 millibar wind level. If the winds are greater than 50 knots, it shows up in gray. And then the stronger it gets, the whiter it gets. So these are, once it gets wide up in here, it's starting to get stronger. Um, this is kind of a messy one. You like to, you know, ideally you'd see this band going right across here and then we'd have, you know, a week of good wave. Didn't happen. Um, so these, this is available for five days in the future, and that's about as far as I would ever trust anything. Um, and so if, what you can do is step through these. Uh, you can, this is actually a, a player, so you can go through them, and then you can find the day when the upper, upper, uh, I need more caffeine. upper mm -hmm. level air looks good, and then look into more detail of what's happening underneath it to see if it's going to be a wave of <laughs> She's like, right now, um, well, that actually looks pretty good. I think I did this on a day when there was wave, and then it's looking in the future. We got this from S. Squall at SMSU. Yeah, I have, at the end of this, I'll have all the uh, addresses I use. Okay, so I'm just going to play through here. Okay, so that looks awful. We're not running at advancing time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking for a time when the jet stream is in place. And see, that looks pretty good. We've got an east-west jet stream just to the south of Minden. Uh, we've got you know 50 knots at, up here at 300 millibars, increasing to the south. So I would expect there to be good wave to the south, not so much to the north. So this one looks good. So. Uh, 18 Zulu for Monday, March 31st. <laughs> the Monday before you got here. <laughs> Did you have wave then? So this was the last week. Yeah. It was awesome wave. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he keep bringing that? Up? There's typical wave. It was when I was doing. It was when I was getting it ready. I couldn't help it. <laughs> you wore out your wave. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was one guy who came here for a week solid because he couldn't come to wave camp. <laughs> <laughs> and he used it all up. <laughs> next year he comes after it. Well, Bill's he was here last year too. It was Bill Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Bill's fault. Yeah, <laughs> so it's <was> Bill's fault. <laughs> He's not even blame him. Right. Always. OK, so this looks good. So I'm going to go look into more detail. So this is the 300 millibar, little the millibar forecast. Um, for the same day. For the same day, for the same time. Um, and but this throws in the uh, actually yeah this is just the, the speeds again just a little finer detail zoomed in on it it's again it's, it's still a San Jose state a lot of that's where most of the stuff comes from so we've got if we look at we're here I'm seeing uh, that's a flag plus some stuff so it's kind of hard to see on here but that's at least 80 knots around there mm -hmm. um, direction is just about perfect. So I'm this like, is at thirty thousand feet. This is at thirty thousand feet. So uh, that's a nice looking, a nice looking setup. Okay, so now we're going to drop down to five hundred millibar, and we've got thirty five knots from two fifty about. Um, relative humidity is a bit high, ninety percent. No, this is yeah. ten thousand feet, and this is no. This is at uh, eighteen thousand. Eighteen. So five hundred millibar. Yeah. So, uh, so here we're we're at the edge of you know in the the bluish is the the ninety, 
and then there's a little bit of drier air here and so that comes through you know, we may get some times of snow and rain but some clearing patches so that's that's you know could be good uh, yeah this is a this is not this is not a slam dunk sure thing but it's definitely enough to get my attention how did you know the relative measure was 90 percent from the color code over oh, that, this, oh, that's the yeah so the blue is the in this chart the uh yeah, sorry, the uh, color is the relative humidity. So below 40% it's white, it starts to go into the green, the darker blue. If it's completely dark blue, it's snow. Yeah. <laughs> now, is, it, is this the same type of chart as the first one? Because I didn't notice the relative humidity on the previous one. Was no, it? the first one doesn't have relative humidity because it's uh, it's up at 30,000 feet. Okay. Oh, okay. And there's, it's usually so dry up there, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to go to the... 700 millibar, which is the 10,000 feet one. And here, again, relative humidity. Um, this is a little more to the south. Um, a little more southwest than I would like. Uh, and we're getting about 25 knots, 20 to 25 around in here. Again, the humidity is a little high, so I'm not real confident. It's not looking the best. So this is the same day, but lower altitude. The same, exact same time. time. But it's a forecast. At this time, the forecast was out three or four days in advance. So, so, so you were looking at this three or four days before that. Right. right. The reason you don't like it is because the humidity or there'll be rain in that period? No, it's the... the uh, 220 degrees for the wind is a little too much from the south. Uh, but you're looking at 90 to 100 percent. And the humidity. So between those two things, it's not looking that great. So again, what humidity would you be looking for? 60 to 80. Yeah, 60 to 80 is, 60 to 80 is, is yeah. ideal. Which is green. And the, w the wind speed was was okay. Uh, wind speed is, is okay. The direction just isn't quite. Twenty right. was minimum. Right? Twenty at twenty at this level is about the minimum. So if you're going through this process, do you start with that large area chart and look for the low, and if the low is in the totally wrong place, just not drill down any further? Um, well, no, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for a jet. So sometimes you can have a jet stream um, that is, when the jet stream is straight, that means that there's a boundary of cold and air, uh, cold and warm air, mm -hmm. but there's not enough shear for it to have started swirling and forming lows. So, or a lot of times that just happens, it, it can be stable for a little bit before it breaks up into those. So that's one thing I'm looking for. The other thing I'm looking for is if it is forming those lows, that if they're in the right spot. Okay. So the two things I look at to start with are the, the weather map to see where the lows are and the jet stream to see where it is. And then I go up from there. Um, so the jet, and pretty much I'm, I would do it in this order. This was just, this was just me going through it for I'm going to start it on this presentation last Thursday or so and then finish it up on Monday. Yeah, it's different from last year. So, um, so yeah. And, you know, this, I would much rather see all these wind barbs wind up going west, not this swirly stuff. These, these are much harder to hit exactly right. Mm -hmm. They're much more unstable. You've got, you've got, uh, a lot more moisture associated with them, so. Isn't that but related can, to the low that's there? Oh yeah, yeah, that is that is the low that's causing that yeah. swirling. Okay, it was it right up north? Yeah, it was in a that you'll be right. Yeah. Well, and it's going to be moving through. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, like I say, not crazy about this one. <clears throat> now I'm also <laughs> now I'm just going into the basic uh, weather forecast. Oh, it's the wrong title on that one. Scratch that out of your head. <laughs> um, this is just the local <laughs> forecast, and they're saying only a 40% chance of precipitation, um, which isn't, that's not bad at all. <clears throat> um, so I kind of like that, 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 that bring, that's bringing my spirits back up a little bit. Um, it's a roller coaster. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and a lot of times around here when they, uh, I think I may have mentioned, 
the slide I did down the SP21 to lead running um, in wave, we were seeing some outstanding wave, and they were calling for 90 to 100 percent chance of uh, precipitation that day. The thing is, in the lee of the mountains, you just there's often a gap, and that's what we were finding. Okay, so this 40 percent until it closed, huh? Until it started breaking up. And yeah, and it, it and it never did close until late that night. Um, so this looks good. You know, I'm I'm getting my hopes up a little bit more. Okay, so what actually happened? Well, the sounding for that that day ended up looking like this. Um, this is why I haven't given up hope for the day. You can see that is not that great. Uh, we've got some increase, but then pretty much constant, and then increasing again. Those yeah, are pretty close together, <laughs> so there's going to be some lenticulars. Um, wall type? Huh? Would that be the wall type? Uh, yeah. Because it doesn't. I'll, sh I'll show you the pictures here in a bit. <laughs> it's a wall type. It's, it was, they were pretty, pretty good. Um, Yeah, so in the, in the fact that these are pretty close together everywhere means that I'm, I'm a little afraid that it might close up the gaps. Okay, so that was the 10 a.m. sounding. The 10 a.m. visible satellite, that's looking good. I like stripes. So we've got these, you can kind of see the stripes going along here. Um, that's indicative of wave on the, on the visible satellite. So, my hopes are getting up a little bit more. Um, and keep in mind, I did not actually get to fly this day because I was working on this. <laughs> um, and then this is what it looked like at 10 a.m., looking south. So, the wave was present. It wasn't that nicely organized. Um, we had surface winds 15 to 20 and clouds around 10,000 feet. Let's go back, let's go back two slides here. Clouds at 10,000 feet, that's not a no surprise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the winds were straight down 1.6 this, uh, for most of the day. Okay, so at three o'clock, um, things have changed a little bit. The wind direction is still a little too south for my liking. Uh, if this was just spread out a little bit more, it would be great. Uh, real tight dew point temperature spread getting even tighter. Remember I had said that there was, the forecast had said that there was, the chance of rain was increasing as the day went on. Well that's, you can see why. Is that thermal with the uh, up to about 9,000 feet, 10,000 feet there? Probably. I mean, there was definitely scattered. Uh, did you fly this day? I think so. I, was, I think you, it was the day that uh, kept the gap kept closing up north. We, we'd try to run north and we'd close and we'd come back then. Uh, no, the day no, before this, the no, because this day the, it, was, it, was, it was very light up to the north. Okay. I, tr I I didn't even bother taking pictures to the north because it looked so unwave like. It all runs together after a while. <laughs> <laughs> this is an OP40, uh, so you're using the OP40 guys? Yeah, that's the one I've got bookmarked and I use all the time. Okay. So, so, yeah, this is not making the wave, it's not helping with the wave. It would sure be nicer if it wasn't, if we hadn't got that heat in. Um, and that's leading it to be, you know, like I said, it was kind of messed up, it wasn't very organized, that's what will do it. Okay, so um, at 3 o'clock, this is the visible satellite. So, uh, you can see here that there may be wave, but nobody's going to be flying it. It's, we're completely overcast now. Um, at least we're not going to be flying over that overcast. Down here, Near uh, this is um, Mono Lake. You can see there's some nice foam gaps down here, so there's probably some good. And this makes more sense. This is you know here we have more east uh, north south ridges, and they go more east west down or more at an angle down here. So the wind was good for those. Mm -hmm. 
So the, 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 the skinny clouds where the, board, the, the Nevada, California borders, those, those are lenticulars? Yes. Yep. Yep. And they're relatively high wavelength, you know, pretty, pretty long, it's a uh, pretty good distance between them. And you know, on a good day, you'll see from, 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 from on across here. This stuff, just you can see how just it's a mess. It's not like we like to see it. It's still workable locally. So the, that's all the way there on the right hand side. That's still you got the primary, secondary, tertiary. Well, bridge. there's lots of and bridges. There's lots of bridges ah, along okay. here that are, that are in that same direction. So you can actually see Jim Payne trying to work it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Followed yes. by Gordon. Yes, there's, 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 there's Jim and there's Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going down with me? The, 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 uh, the, the mass of cloud uh, to the west, is, is, is that all orographic lifting or is yes. that it is? Okay. Yeah, so that's, uh, all this stuff is, you know, was out over the Pacific a lot yeah. earlier. It's all coming uphill, cooling off as it does it, and, you know, raining and snowing on mm -hmm. the the Sierras there. Okay, so at 3 p.m., this is what the sky looked like. Now, <coughs> these clouds have lowered a little bit because a little bit more moisture. Um, we've got the, that solid overcast I showed in the satellite, and it was shown by the uh, sounding. <coughs> these are wave clouds. I mean, there is a there's a very steady gap in front of these. That's the foam gap. These have, because of so much moisture, they are not nice looking lenticular clouds. They're more of the cumulo lenticular. Um, but there was lift up there. And then some more, more right after I took this, it got ugly. A lot of moisture came in, ceiling dropped, and we stopped flying. Okay. So now I just want to show some sample soundings from some good wave days. Just a rough So you'll know what to look for and plan a visit. Okay, so this is a, so we've got a nice, nice direction here. We've got increasing with altitude, that's nice. Uh, stable, just a very small adiabatic layer here. Um, big gap, maybe some stuff up here at the 35,000 30, 35, foot level as far as clouds go, but unlikely with that kind of a gap. Um, so this would probably be a nice blue wave. And what sort of time w would this be at? I'm guessing this was uh, pretty early in the morning from how small this is. Okay, so this um, this looks beautiful, just steadily increasing, and uh, we've got about 20 knots at 10,000 feet, 40, 50 knot, or 40 knots at uh, 18, and 70 knots at 30. So that's like almost exactly what I'm saying to look for. Um, not so stable, right? Not quite as stable, but a good chunk of it is stable, so that's okay. Um, the stability, if you got these nice conditions, the stability kind of gets overridden by the other stuff, so that's okay. We've got two layers of clouds here, so nice. Um, I mean, this, this would be a beautiful day. I wish I had pictures from this day. Let's show what it looked like, March 15th, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A week before wave comes roughly. Okay, this is another beauty. Uh, nice, nice wind profile, nice markings. You know, we've got some, this will, you know, this is pretty much going to give us some rotor. And, some, and a low lenticular, a higher and a higher, so just everything's marked. Give you the rotor or rotor clouds? Rotor clouds. Yeah, sorry. The marking the rotor. That was, uh, was that? Um, was this wave camp last year? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, is, um, 
Was that uh, what came out on the day of, or was that a prognostication? How was that? Uh, that was a day. Most like I, I don't know, okay. but most likely it, it was, was very very close to the actual time. Okay. Because usually when I see when I when I look like it's going to be a good day, and then it really is a good day, I save the the sounding so that I have it to show to people to rub it in. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is these are the sites that I just used for the general forecast. Uh, this one, the jet stream forecast, the 300, 500, and 700, and then the forecast soundings. So those are all the ones you need to go out in a few days. Um, as uh, Kimpton was saying, it's really not rocket science. You're just looking for a specific set of conditions. Um, you know, we're lucky here in Minden because the stronger the drop-off you have, the more vertical the drop-off in the big waves, the more likely that you know, not perfectly favorable wave conditions can still give you a wave. And because we have such a steep drop-off out there, and I think, I really think that the, having the, the cold lake there helps keep things stable and makes it work better here too. So, you know, for those of you who live within a few hours drive, a short plane trip. You can keep this stuff in mind. Start, you know, five days out is when I start having some faith in what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, I don't, the stuff Kempton does is nine, ten days out. It's like, you know, it's 50 50 <laughs> at that point. But four or five days out, and then two or three days out, I definitely start thinking it's going to be there. So, the good thing about Wave is it's, uh, you know, it's a large scale thing. So you're not having to get the, the humidity just right like you do for thunderstorms or thermals. So it's a little easier to, the big models, the big course models do a better job for this than they do with the, uh, predicting stability and stuff. Okay. Let me get out of this. You know where they're soaring away right now? Huh? What's that? You know where they're soaring away right now? He, he even sent me a he, he sent out oh, a Mount Hood. Mount Hood. And that's the folks associated with the club up there. The guy's up over and that's one of those new electric silent twos, I think he's flying. They said it's a silent two. I think it's one that has a little electric motor with a little yeah. prop blades that come out in front. Who knows where he's, I don't know if he got an aero tow and then got it from the wave at Open River or something. Beautiful looking pictures. The cat cloud and everything over there. Yeah, I saw the email, I didn't look at the uh, no. <clears throat> We've got about 30 knots, and this is at uh, 30,000 feet. That's not enough. Wow, that is really wrong. So, so there's a high down south. Is that what's causing this overflow? Probably high pressure down here, and I can go to the. Let me go to another one. This gives you a little bit bigger picture. Um, yeah, there must be a high pressure in here. You get some clockwise circulation. You're getting it splitting the jet stream there. We actually saw that high yesterday, sitting a little north off the coast, right? And when we talked about it, we said that was a high pressure that has been keeping California dry. It's push, getting pushed down. It's going to slowly go through this way and get, go along with the circulation. Um, so right now doesn't look good for <coughs> wave. I'm going to step through, and this steps through in three hour increments, in six hour increments. <laughs> so the fact that this area is getting closer to us. Oh. <laughs> So this is for 18 Zulu on the 10th, which is Thursday. Well, 18, uh, on the 10th is Thursday, but it's 18 Zulu. It's 11 a.m. Yeah. So it's late Wednesday here? No. No, it's 10 o'clock Wednesday night? 
10 a.m. That would be 11 to 10 a.m. Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Oh. <coughs> Darn. You may stay in a day extra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than my plane that way. I was going to, but my wife suggested I come home. <laughs> just um, a suggestion. Okay, so here's 10 o'clock. This would be 10 o'clock uh, Wednesday morning. Okay, so we do have 50 knots, pretty close to this. At, at uh, 30,000. Okay. That's uh, 18 to. So this is this is a close up of that. So we got 50, 50, 50, 55 in there. So what altitude is that again? This is the 30,000. So we'd like to see. We'd definitely like to see more than that. But look just to the left of the fives. It's a huge speed difference. So let's go to the left. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was thinking that was a half a bar of the yeah. flag. Yeah, that's a flag. So this is 45, that's 50. So. But it's in just about the perfect direction. Yep, direction is good. <coughs> just so, and so we may get some weak waves. Okay, so that's the 30. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in the, uh, excuse me, the, the 300. Now I'm going to add the 500. That's again 18,000, did you say? It's 18,000, yes. So... Nice direction. Um, you're going to have to find it on your own because there's not going to be any clouds probably. We'll see if there's any more shit on well. Okay, so the 500 is looking pretty decent. Yes, it's ten thousand. Yeah, it's really two o'clock. Two o'clock. Yeah, so the, the wind is too far from the south, right? Yeah, a little bit more than we'd like, but still possibly doable. So Wednesday, I'm holding out some slight hope. Could you go a little bit farther in the day? <clears throat> it's eight a.m. But that's 8 a.m. on Thursday. That's 9. Oh, no, One more. One more. One more. Still 10 more. Jump ahead one more. One more. One more. Okay, that's 5 o'clock. Yeah. It's almost like it's in some kind of eddy. Of course. Yeah. Off in the future on that one, there's just nothing that looks good. So I would say Wednesday is the best bet for the next week or so. Okay, so that's and, what and we're looking at. And Joe's Peak or Jack's Valley and towing close. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <coughs> tomorrow morning, when it's the most stable, it's going to give us, you know, even though the winds may not be the perfect thing, that might give us a good chance of both the wave and the hydraulic jump to get those those going. Um, Should we plan on getting here earlier tomorrow? Well, what I think we're going to do tomorrow is tomorrow <coughs> um, I was going to give 
an incredibly long, detailed, painful uh, weather seminar, you know, from start to finish. And uh, I think I may skip that so that we can fly all day. And so we'll just see what the conditions are. If we go flying and nobody stays up and it's a bust, then I'll give the presentation. Uh, if not, I won't. If, you know, if it's good waves, then obviously we're going to all fly. So we're going to play that by ear. Um, Russell, can, can you uh, take a minute and maybe tell us what the best means for wave, you know, uh, um, worst times of the year to come here for wave? for those who want to come back, you know, <laughs> later on. It's always last week and next week. <laughs> <laughs> I, but there's some months that are normally yeah. not wave. And well, I mean, this is normally the best one, which yeah, is why we March have wave. Yeah. So um, March, April, and